Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now here in my hands, my Ruger PC carbine. Now today's video is not specifically about my Ruger PC carbine, rather my buddy Roy who just picked one up to add it to his firearms lineup. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna get it set up at the range. We're gonna do what I'm calling, I guess, a field mounting of the Vortex Strike Fire 2 Red Dot Optic on his Ruger PC carbine. Now I will premise this entire video by saying if I was to do it, I would pretty much typically start here in the office, in the studio, in the workshop with the tools that I have available to me. When it's out in the field, it's a little bit different. So I did have a couple of things to help me along the way, but generally speaking, my basic toolkit and my field toolkit, not all the things that I have here in the office, in the studio, or in my workshop. So bottom line is you can make some concessions while you're out in the field and still get pretty good results. And I do want to also point out the adjustments that we made are absolutely not perfect, nor are they the end all be all. This is simply a place to get started, a place to figure out where we're hitting on target and getting it close enough that from here on out, my buddy Roy can continue to make adjustments, continue to make refinements, and at least he's somewhere close. So as he goes through future progressions and makes it out to the range, he can continue to dial things in and get it tighter and tighter. So again, what we're gonna do today to get out to the field we're going to get roy's brand new pc carbine we're going to get that set up with the vortex strike fire 2 red dot but with that said i have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you and if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what we are about to get into do me a favor stay tuned So if you had two scope ranks, okay, I would try to level this both in this direction and in this direction. But where this is a single scope ring, I'm really worried about the twist because it's going to be fixed this way no matter what we do. Right, so right now you can see I have it loose. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get the actual carbine for the most part as level as I can just on these bench. So you can see getting that bubble level. I'm gonna to try to get this as close as I can to level. It's not, not gonna be perfect. This is what I'm gonna call like field level, <laughs> but better than not, right? Mm -hmm. So now that that's level, my goal is gonna to be to try to get this level. So you gotta find something on here that's like kind of flat. Yeah, that's gonna to be tough. Yeah. <laughs> so what you can mm -hmm. do sometimes is like remove a cap just kind of depends but the top of this battery yep. seems like that's a pretty level spot so if I twist this and get it pretty damn close again this is gonna be better than not but not perfect if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. okay and once I get that pretty damn close just gonna double check that this didn't move on me much it did a little bit gonna make a minor adjustment and that's gonna be what we do from there I'll lock it down Okay. All right, and so now I'm just gonna torque this down. I don't know what value it's looking for, but I'm just gonna kind of feel it out, going nice and easy, even across both sides. Again, just kind of feeling it out. Now these are starting to bind, which is where you want it. And now I'll probably just go to like five inch pounds to start. Roughly, I'm gonna crisscross the pattern. That's already at five. That's already at five. So I'm gonna to go to 10. My gut's telling me to stop at eight. Okay, that's already at eight. That's already at eight. I'm just gonna work at this until it feels about right. So now we're at 10 inch pounds all the way across and that's mounted. Half-assed at best, but a reasonably level platform. I'm gonna start working with the turrets here. And the way I remember it is, up is bring your shot up. Right is bring your shot right. So if it's too far to the left, 
you're gonna bring your shot to the right. You're gonna move the turret to the right. If the shot's too low, you're gonna, you're gonna bring it up. So in other words, move that up is bring your shot up, okay? I think you'll get this. All right, so remember, I asked you what MOA yep. the, the scope was, right? Yep. So what you need to remember is at 100 yards, one MOA is equal to one inch. One inch. Okay? Yeah. Now, let's just say we were here shooting at one position, yep. right? And we're shooting straight out towards our target, and that's at 100 yards. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you shoot and you're off by one inch, you okay, go right. at 100, you're off one Two MOA, clicks. right? Exactly. Two clicks on half MOA adjustment. Yep. But remember, okay, so we're going to zero your scope at 50 yards. 25 okay. right now. Well, eventually okay. we're going to go to 50. All right, so 25 is going to just find it on paper. Yep. But we're going to go to 50. So the reality is, it's at, if you were off by an inch, at 50 yards, right. it's double that, clicks. right? Yeah. So if we're off at 50, it's double that at 100. Okay. So you need to remember, it's double the adjustment at okay. 50. In other right. words, at 25, it's, it's four, times four times the adjustment, right? Yeah. So we gotta pay attention to that, but that's kinda how that works. Ready? Right, yeah, we're good. So we're gonna go out to 25 yards and trial by fire. And you're just actually a tiny bit to the right. All right, so so Roy, your first shot there is literally, I would say, uh, a little bit hot by the touch. Don't adjust the elevation, but you're gonna try to pull your shot. So left. you're pulling your shot left. So I would say probably like eight clicks to start. And you're pulling it left, so you can see. Yep. Eight clicks? Yep. Yeah. That yep. uh, was two clicks. Those two, yep. Hmm. Okay. Let's see how that goes. Can turn the brightness down on this a little bit? A little too. Yeah, the, the least bright, the tighter the aim will be. Okay. Here we go. Dead center. Nope. Hold on. Let me take another one. That was bad. That second shot was... I can't even see. Okay, so you are uh, a little low and still a little right. So because you were high and then you were low, I'd say just Let's shoot it again. keep keep pulling it. Keep. Right, let me actually increase the brightness. Keep pulling it left. So after four or five shots, I do uh, eight more, eight more clicks left. Dead center. That was aimed dead center. That was low, but it's almost in right. Okay, and the AR-15 is getting to the small... Yeah. And, uh, Once you get into rifle, uh, this so is kind of a must. Also conceal it. In a way. All right, so going out to 50. All right, so that's a one-inch one grid. Okay. The so whole thing or each, each square? Each square is one inch, so we'll know once he starts hitting what he needs to do to adjust. So every inch he's off in both directions. He's going to have to click his adjustments four times, basically. Obviously going dead nut center. Can you see that okay? Yep. Do you have any magnification on that, or is that one time? I don't know. I think that's one time magnification, right? That's it. I have the manual. Um, I think that's just 1x. There's no zoom capability, right? No. Yep, so... Just 1x. You're high. That was... Take three shots. There we go. That's close. That was top right corner of the. Where is he? I don't even. Know. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was a little high. Those one, two, three. Okay. Roy, hold on. Time out, Roy. Hmm? Time out. Flip this. Use that to your advantage. Okay. There we go. Yep. Keep it as steady as you can because you're trying to zero. So you have to bench. I did not see that one. 
you're, you're high. <laughs> Two shots high there. Yeah, you're high, so we got to adjust okay. it down. If you're aiming at that center. I'm aiming at that center. Yep, so now that you have the rifle at the right height, it was making a difference in where you were hitting. So you got to bring your shot down, so your adjustment is going to be down. How many clicks? Um, uh, honestly, I would do like, I would do at least eight. Because it's four inch. Yeah, that but it, at the end, see how he's up by the head? Yeah. That's a pretty far distance to move. And that's because you brought the rifle now into the plane of sight by bringing it up on the bench. Okay. Uh, I think you're still a little high. Do another. Yep. Yeah. I would drop it more. Okay. Nice. That was center of the neck, so that works. Let me try that. You're big, getting uh, closer. Steel target. Nice. All right, so you need to come down another eight. Okay. Not bad. Nice. Still, still a touch high. Just a touch high. So you can either, you can bring it down if you want. But just, still a touch high? Yep, still a touch high. Another, uh, another magazine out of there. Put that one next to the box. I'll try right, again. You're grouping about, uh, I'd say, two inches high from center of target. Still, really? Yep. But you're getting damn close. You might want to bring it down and if you're looking at it the I'm same looking, way every I'm time. I'm actually aiming a little low, like just pulling it down a little. Don't aim at center because you're zeroing the scope. No, no, just to see where you what you said. Right. Yeah. So I'm aiming center, but I just pulled it low a little bit. Yep. So we still need to come down. Yep, I would come down. Give it maybe uh, eight more clicks. I think you're just a little right. I think that was in the center, but Yep, that was almost pulls up. Just off the... Yeah. Yep. Alright, brother, you're dancing. So, this is all about how good can he aim and how good can he uh, breathe and... Am I still going for dead center? Oh yeah, you're, you're, you're locked in. So this is zeroed. You're a little low and left. Better. Better. Keep coming up. Do you want? Do you want to? Keep Is that in the center? Uh, you're like within like a couple inches dancing around it. Done right? Yep. That's ringing. Headshot. Got a couple. You're low. Way low. Up. Up. There you go. There you go.
And so, all right, guys, there you have it. A look at getting the Ruger PC carbine set up out in the field with the Vortex Strike Fire 2. All in all, a great combination. I do have to say, I like that optic for the Ruger PC carbine. I think it's effective. I think it's a good quality option, and especially where it's only a one-time power optic. I do like that. Bottom line is you could go a few different ways. That for me had a nice height in terms of my cheek weld and the ability to see on the optic. It also has very nice eye relief where you can set it off into the distance and kind of look straight through it. I typically like to shoot a red dot optic or something like that with both eyes open. So having the ability to do that was great. Now I didn't show you everything. I did personally have a little bit of trouble hitting the target. I was shooting a little low and couldn't quite find my way. That's because everybody's eyes are going to be a little bit different. So my buddy Roy, it's perfect. It's dialed in for him. And even in certain cases, he was stacking shots, which is awesome. It's not perfect, but again, being field ready and I guess what I'm going to say, field mounted, it might not be exactly perfect, but it's close enough now that he can continue to work at it, get it further refined, and dial it in each and every time he goes out to the range. So for him, this is going to be a perfect setup. I think he made a great choice with the Vortex Strike Fire 2, and I know he made a great choice with the Ruger PC Carbine. And so with that, that's the end of our video. Thank you very much for following along. If you like this content, do me a favor. Take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is more on my primary gear. On that channel, I cover everything from hiking, camping, and backpacking excursions, all the gear that goes with it. So from sleep systems, shelter systems, knives, axes, backpacks, flashlights, you name it, that's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.